Well, hello everybody, and I hope you've all had a great half-term break. Um, so sorry that I can't get together with you in person uh, this week, but hopefully uh, we'll be back together very soon now. At least I can remember what you look like and imagine you're all sitting in your classrooms uh, watching, watching this video. This week I want to talk about something rather, rather special. There's rather a lot of special things going on recently, haven't there, apart from half term. We've had Harvest Festival, we've had Thanksgiving for those uh, who keep that uh, American tradition. Uh, we've got, uh, we've had Halloween and of course we've got Bonfire Night coming up shortly as well. And we are beginning to turn our minds to preparing for Christmas. In fact, when I was passing through Isha recently, I noticed the first decorations beginning to go up in some of the, the shop windows. Far too early, from my perspective, I must say. Um, but at least it starts us thinking about Christmas and the coming, coming of Jesus, which we'll be doing some very special assemblies about over the coming weeks. But one of the first things we probably find ourselves thinking about uh, when our minds turn to Christmas, is giving presents. Uh, need to be bought well in advance, and we want something that's special for those who are near and dear to us, for our mums and dads, uncles and aunts, brothers and sisters, and all those special, special friends. And we give those, of course, not just to show how much we love our mums and dads and others, as of course we do, but also uh, to remember how much God loves us as well and how he gave us the greatest present of all, the greatest present of all. He sent us Jesus. But this year, I want you and your mums and dads, for that matter, to think about possibly giving a present to somebody whom you don't know. Not just the people you know well and can recognise and have hugs with, but somebody, some people, a long way away. People you don't know, but you need to feel God's love through you. So what we'd like to encourage you to do is to send a present to a family, or perhaps an elderly person, who lives a long way away in Eastern Europe. In Eastern Europe, where people are very poor, and probably many of them won't be getting any presents this Christmas. And I want you to think about possibly filling a shoebox like this with some gifts that you might send to them. What I'm going to do before we talk about what might go into the shoebox is I'm going to show you a short video which will tell you a bit about what life is like in some of those areas in Eastern Europe. I'm afraid the commentary to it is a little bit quiet, but what I want you to do is to look very carefully at the picture, the pictures you see, and think about what's like our lives over here, but also what's very different. <laughs> years, Link to Hope has sent gifts of love packaged in shoeboxes from families in the UK to some of the poorest communities in Eastern Europe. Every shoebox has brought a message of hope and love from far away, a message that someone cares enough to send a token of unexpected joy at Christmas time. Each shoebox tells a different story. A story that begins with the family that filled and wrapped it with love and care and ends thousands of miles away in the arms of a family or elderly person lifting the lid to discover its contents. And this year, we will reach the amazing milestone of having given out one million shoeboxes. That's a million stories of giving. One million times a family somewhere in the UK has reached out to someone unknown and a million times a shoebox has brought a smile of joy onto the face of a family or an elderly person. <laughs> it 
It's a million different stories of finding families in shacks, of knocking on doors in desolate tower blocks, of meeting lonely old people in almost deserted villages, visiting excited children in school, and reaching into remote communities. Shoeboxes have also enabled us to take a million small steps in building up relationships with project leaders, churches, and communities in Eastern Europe. Over 30 years, Link to Hope has worked with these groups on life-changing projects that have created employment, looked after young people, fed the elderly, educated children, taught parents, built shower blocks, rebuilt homes, and much more. We'd like to say a big thank you to all our supporters over the last 30 years, but most importantly, a million thank yous to all those who each year have taken the time to carefully fill a shoebox with beautiful gifts for families or elderly people. So, this year, please bring a little happiness to a poor family or elderly person in the shape of a shoebox. to believe that those scenes were in today's so-called modern uh, Eastern Europe, still using horse-drawn transport, uh, people living in those tumble-down shacks, sorry, big families, some of them all crammed together. The cold, the cold of Eastern Europe with no insulation, no central heating, the things that we take for granted. Did you notice right at the end that that old man? Um, I wondered what sort of life he'd he'd lived through. He must have been born possibly during the end of the towards the end of the Second World War, and then he suffered years of oppression under Soviet occupation, the old Soviet Union. But all through that time, he maintained his Christian faith, and you could see now he wears his cross outside his clothing. It was probably hidden for many years in case the authorities spotted it. Let's have another quick look at him. So, what are we going to put in our shoe boxes? Well, there's a little leaflet that your teacher should be able to give you, which makes uh, some suggestions. But to help us with this, uh, Darren has actually made up a shoebox. I'm just going to show you a few of the things he's put in it, which seem to be really good ideas. And first thing, thinking about all that cold, is a woolen hat. Just what you need when it's snowing outside. Simple gift, but gosh, it doesn't half keep the head nice and warm. Why don't you give them a woolen, a woolen hat? For the children, simple toys. Nothing didn't be anything complicated, but a little sketchbook and maybe some some crayons to go to go with it. Something they can play with easily. Useful gifts for schooling. Why not give them a simple calculator? But not a complicated one that needs batteries. This one works off sunlight and so you don't have to go out and spend what little money you've got replacing the batteries. You just put it in the sun and it's ready for the next day's next day's schooling. Keeping clean is quite important and quite an expensive business. A nice flannel. Some toothpaste. Razor for dad. Toothbrush. Some soap. More toys, bubbles to blow. And of course, because it's Christmas, what about some sweeties? So, I do hope that some of you will want to take part in our shoebox appeal 
this year. Teachers, you should have a supply of the leaflets, but if you haven't, let Mr Foley know and we can organise uh, the photocopying of some more. Uh, if you want to know more about the appeal, we're going to be having a special service this Sunday at 10.30 at Christchurch and we'll be blessing the shoe boxes when they're all filled up at the end of the month at another special service on the 28th of November. But in the meantime, I'd like to just finish with a prayer. And if you'd like to make that prayer your own, please join in the Amen at the end. Dear Lord God, as we start to prepare for Christmas, as we start thinking about buying presents for our friends and families, help us also to remember the people who may not receive any presents this year. We give thanks for everyone who will show their love by filling a shoebox. And may they bring joy to those who receive them. Amen. Thank you, everybody, and see you soon.